The other day I opened a bottle of wine and it was absolutely disgusting, it stunk and it really got me thinking about wine faults and the contributing factors to faults in wine. So today's video we're going to take a look at some of those and what you can expect from an appearance and particularly from an aroma perspective. Hello and welcome to The Great Explorer where we celebrate the world of wine. On this channel we do wine education, product reviews and lots of tastings, so if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Now there are lots of driving factors that can create a fault in a wine. It can go right from the winemaking processes all the way through to the way that we look after our wine in our homes. And so today I thought I'd go through some of those key wine faults and give you an idea of what to look out for in the case of you have a bottle of wine that perhaps smells a little off. Now like I say, some of these processes start in the winemaking process. You know, there may have been uh, dirty barrels used, it may be an unhygienic environment, the winemaker may have chosen a particular process that hasn't quite come off as was, as was intended. And also in the home, particularly the way we look after our wine and where we store it in the house can contribute to potential for wine faults. So to start off with, we're going to talk about ethyl acetate. Now, ethyl acetate uh, in wine contributes some particularly aggressive aromas. I'm talking about things like paint thinner, a nail varnish, or perhaps vinegar. And it's the use of acetic acid in wines, and in some cases using too much acetic acid, that's going to contribute to the volatility of those aromas in the wine. Now all of these compounds, like acetic acid, are just naturally occurring in the wine as it's created. But like I say, it's the overexposure of some of these, or the presence of some of these in high quantities, that are going to contribute to these faults. Now acetaldehyde is a byproduct of yeast fermentation and in excessive quantities it's going to contribute some um, sherry-like aromas which whilst acceptable in certain sherries may not be acceptable in a wine. You can end up with some sour notes, some metallic notes to the wine that are quite unpleasant on the nose. Now, many labels of wine will can tell you that they contain sulfites, and some of the sulfur compounds in, in wine, in particularly high quantities, can also contribute some unpleasant wine faults. In the case of sulfur dioxide, in too much quantities you can get the smells of burnt rubber, mothballs, perhaps a struck match. And wines created in this way are sometimes termed as sulfuric. Hydrogen sulfide is another contributor to wine faults, and this is particularly unpleasant as it gives off the aroma of rotten eggs. Mercaptans are a compound which can be created as the result of lees, and they can end up giving aromas of sour onions or even skunk, which sounds absolutely dreadful. And finally, dimethane sulfide is a byproduct of sulfites in wine, and the aromas here are quite vegetal in that it can be things like cooked cabbage. So those are all examples of chemical types of faults in wine that are contributing to chemical types of aromas. And as I said at the start of this video, there are also environmental factors. And the classic one of those is cork taint. Everybody's heard the phrase, my wine is corked before. And cork taint in a wine where more excess oxygen has been allowed to escape through the cork and into the bottle can contribute aromas of wet cardboard, wet newspaper and just a general dampness about the wine. Another popular environmental aroma impact is that of a cooked wine. Uh, and by that I mean that the heat in your house, uh, where you keep your wine stored, may be excessively warm, or there could be a real variance in temperatures, hot one minute, cold the next. The kitchen's a really good example of that. And that's going to cook the wine, and actually the aromas can end up being quite cooked. You get a lot of cooked fruit aromas uh, where you have left a wine in a room that's subject to significant heat variation. Light strike is a phrase that's used where the wine has had excessive exposure to sunlight, particularly ultraviolet light. And this can result in aromas of a struck match. Finally, we're going to look at some of the aromas that are on a microbiological level. So again, there are compounds in the wines, you know, the, the grapes and the yeasts all contribute to various aromas within that wine. And on occasion, in too high a quantity, they can really spoil the aromas of a wine. Now don't get me wrong, some of the producers are actually looking to get some of these aromas in their wine, however in a small quantity. And it is very easy to go too far and allow too much of these aromas in. So first off, we're going to look at Britannomyces, which is a compound that can contribute various aromas uh, to a wine. And these can be sticking plasters, band-aid smells, kind of farmyard smells. 
Sometimes you'll get smoky smells, bacony smells. And like I say, in certain quantities, these can be really pleasant. But in any wine where this is too excessive, it's really gonna spoil that aroma. So there we are, there's a quick look at some of the wine faults we can expect to look out for in our wines. But let me know, have you been the victim of wine faults in wine? What kind of aromas did it give off? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.